Hello, my name is Sam and I'm an environmental modeler at the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, based in Lancaster. This short video is my application to become a 2022 Software Sustainability Institute Fellow. So though I work in the environmental sciences these days, my background was actually as a physicist and the first models that I developed during my PhD weren't of the environment, they were of quantum nanostructures and how they can be used for applications such as superfast lasers for data comms and the solar powered splitting of water to produce renewable hydrogen. But at the same time as doing my PhD, I built on my lifelong passion for creating websites and worked as a freelance web developer, designing and coding lots of sites like this one, using open source languages and software like PHP and Laravel. Uh, and it was this work that really got me interested in open source and sustainable software. After my PhD, I joined UKCEH as an environmental contaminants modeler and here my work mainly involves studying how potential pollutants such as heavy metals, plastics and nanomaterials move around the environment. I create spatiotemporal multimedia models of contaminant fate, like this one here, which is showing the dynamics of nanotitanium dioxide concentrations in surface waters in the Thames catchment. I have a strong interest in integrated modelling and accordingly my work frequently involves using integrated models to assess the bigger picture such as this work here where I'm integrating models to predict how heavy metal pollution in soils will change under differing socio-economic and climatic conditions. And in a slight return to my physics roots, I'm currently leading an international consortium of researchers to develop a model of how microplastic fragments or breaks apart in the environment. A key part of this project is interfacing our fragmentation model with models from parallel projects such as fate, transport and additive release models, with a view to providing these as useful and usable tools to stakeholders, such as industry and regulators. And so software sustainability is playing a big part in this work, firstly in ensuring these models interface well, but also in ensuring models are user friendly and reliable, and our results are trustworthy, transparent and reproducible. Through this and other work, I am an active member of the Fortran community, I have become an early career fellow on NERC's Constructing a Digital Environment Expert Network, and I frequently contribute to open source software and enjoy releasing my own software for use by the community, including tools to help modeling, as well as the models themselves, such as a few of the examples shown here. And if this video seems familiar, well, this isn't my first SSI fellowship application. So I applied for the 2021 cohort, and though I was unsuccessful then, Every cloud has its silver lining, and one of the great things to come out of the conversations at the online selection day for 2021 was the opportunity to write this article on software producibility. So in this article, we flip the question of how do I make my software reproducible on its head and first ask, well, how, reprodu how reproducible do you need your software to be? And we define a number of levels of reproducibility to help answer this. So for 2021, my proposition was to create a series of educational bite-sized videos on various topics related to software sustainability. As I say, this was unsuccessful, but I still think it's a good idea. But I also think there's great potential to build on the reproducibility article I just mentioned. So this time round, I propose to merge these ideas and focus the educational resources I create on software reproducibility. And whilst I will focus a topic on software reproducibility, I want to broaden the resources I'll provide. So firstly, the approach we suggest in our article hugely lends itself to the creation of an interactive tool. Let me explain. We suggest that software can be broken down into different levels of reproducibility, from barely repeatable software that you might use to run one-time analyses with inconsequential results, to software as infrastructure, which is used by multiple people for multiple research outputs over a reasonable period of time. This interactive tool will tell you what level your software is at by asking you a series of questions about it, such as who will use it and what it will be used for. Then, once the tool has told you what level of software should be at, it will provide guidance on how to make your software the required level of reproducibility for that level. And this guidance will include educational bite-sized videos that I create. There are obviously lots of different aspects that make software reproducible 
and so these guides will cover a broad range of topics such as using version control tools and paradigms such as Git and Gitflow, containerizing your software using tools such as Docker, what licenses to choose and how to write good code and good documentation. The SSI Fellowship will be crucial in kickstarting this project as it will give me the funding to help me set up and host the website to host this tool and guidance, as well as funding to buy AV equipment and editing software, potentially extending to professionally produced graphics to make the resources as engaging as possible. And last but certainly not least, it will provide a community through which to disseminate these resources. So thanks for listening, folks. I hope you like my idea and I hope I've convinced you that I would be worthy of an SSI fellowship.